What's up, everybody? This is Dr. Khan from the ACL Academy, and today I'm going to touch on the importance of neuromuscular electrical stimulation and how it is crucial to the beginning of your ACL recovery process after surgery. Now, um, before I get into that, if you guys have been following along, uh, please like the video, subscribe to the page, share it with a friend, spread the word. So, uh, you guys see me talk about this before and educate how important it is that after ACL surgery, yes, we want to get the leg nice and straight, um, but we also want to wake up that quad muscle, that big front thigh muscle. That is the muscle that after surgery gets weak, gets inhibited. What I like to tell people, it goes on vacation. And for some people, it comes back quicker than others. Um, and some people struggle really a long time for actually being able to get a nice solid quad contraction. So after surgery, what I recommend is we talk about, yes, getting the knee straight, but we also talk about uh, the first and most important exercise that we do is a quad set or a quad contraction, right? Using um, or pushing the back of the knee down into the floor to really get this quad muscle going. Now, in addition to that, we use something called uh, electric stim. Now, this is not the stim that most of you guys know, which is called TENS, which is for pain relief. It's those small pads that you put anywhere over your body. You turn on the machine, you get a nice tingly pins and needles feeling, and it feels good. It decreases some pain. This is what we call muscle stim, okay, neuromuscular electrical stim. Uh, this is a very intense stim. It's not a feel-good stim. Uh, it's a stim to you activate, turn on that muscle to help you contract, uh, right? Help you wake up that muscle. Uh, this has been looked at in the evidence and research and shown to be very, very effective. So we use it with all our clients early on after surgery. And there are certain parameters that are shown to be better. So um, it's a unit like this that we like to use. They don't sell this anymore, but this is a unit that I love. Um, you could go on Amazon if you type in electrical muscle stim, Neuromuscular electrical stim, we like a unit, uh, Bellagio makes it. So if you type in Bellagio EMS unit, you will see the unit that we send out to our clients. Um, and I will go over the parameters that we use. I will also put it in the, in the notes uh, below so this way you guys get an idea of what to do. I'm going to go over the whole setup um, as well as the parameters as well as how we utilize it. Now, um, leg position matters. In the beginning, it's tough to bend the knee, so we do the leg, we do it nice and straight because it also helps out the straightening and it's a good way to wake up the quad. So early on, I do it with the leg straight. As you get more bending range of motion, it's important that you do the stem in a bent position, around 60 degrees of knee bend. Okay, so you'll do this in a seated chair um, if you're doing this at home. But in the beginning, after surgery, um, we recommend leg straight. It's a good way to work the quads, activate the quads, and get them going. And I use this day one after surgery if the patient is comfortable, okay? So uh, let's get started. First is pad placement, okay? I like big pads like this. These are super important. The bigger the pads, the more area we can cover. And for a big muscle group like the quads, we do want to use big pads. Most of these units will come with small square pads, one inch by one inch. This is a three by five. So uh, ideally, the bigger pads, the better. And you could search for this on Amazon and Google, and you'll be able to find pads like this as well. First pad placement goes um, just above the knee, okay, across the VMO area. So it's going to kind of go diagonal like this across the bottom inner side of that quad. And I'll show you guys an aerial view so you can see this. Second pad is going to go find your hip bone with one finger, okay? And then you're going to go four fingers down from that. So put your hands right down on your thigh, and this is going to go horizontal to the leg right across, okay? And you'll take your lead, and you'll plug in into each. Let me give you guys a little bit of a bird's eye view here. So... If you look, one of the pads is just above my knee on a diagonal across that VMO muscle, and one is more horizontal on the upper part of my quad, 
just about four to five finger breaths below the uh, hip bone. So that's that hip bone right here. You put four or five fingers down and then you're placed. So you're all set up, good to go. Next is the unit. So the parameters are super important. I'm gonna, again, I'll list them below, but I'll go over them each one. So this way you get a good idea when you get your unit. First thing that we do, um, you turn on the unit, and the first parameters that we're looking to set up are the on and off time. So what does this mean? Is it's not gonna be a continuous stimulation for the muscle, right? Uh, we're going to stimulate the muscle for a few seconds, and then we're gonna give it a nice rest break, right? So this is important for recovery, um, and that we, we get the most out of our contractions here. So for the on time, we like to do 12 seconds on, okay? And then give a nice 50 second break. And I'm gonna show you what you'll be doing in that off time to also help boost this up. Next is the rate of the stim. We use 75 pulses per second. Okay, so uh, again, when you go through the custom settings on there, when it says rate, we're looking for a rate of 75 pulses per second. Uh, the waveform, we want it to be symmetrical and synchronous, right? So we want it, these pads to contract at the same time together. Uh, and then the next is the ramp time. So when we turn up the intensity, right, uh, uh, the more intense we turn up the stim, uh, uh, how fast do we want it to get there? Do you want it to zap us real quick? Again, as I said, it, it is a very intense stim. So you may want a little bit of a ramp time. So I set anywhere from one to two seconds just to slowly get us up to that peak and then level out. Uh, then the last is pulse width. Okay, so we like a width of 400, which is on this unit. Not all units will go up that high. Uh, the Bellagio unit that we send on Amazon only goes up to 300. So that's fine. I'll we'll keep it between three and 400. Uh, and then lastly is the time is 15 minutes. We like to do these. So you'll get about anywhere from uh, 12 contractions or so while we're doing this then per um, each time you do it. Now, most important part is the intensity, right? So we are gonna crank this puppy up until we see a contraction and then ideally higher, right? So the most benefit for these is the higher you can go. So we really, really wanna turn up the intensity. It's going to be super uncomfortable at first, super weird at first, but as you get comfortable with it, I want you to crank it up. So we're gonna slowly start to go up and then what you're gonna see is, you, first you'll start to feel tingles and then it'll get tighter and tighter and tighter and then what you're gonna see is my muscles start to contract. So I'm going up little by little, I already got a little bit of contraction here on the lower side and then I keep going, ooh, that does not feel great. <laughs> and now I got my whole quad muscle contracting. And as I get the intensity up to a certain level, I'm going to hold it there and I'll be held for about 12 seconds. So you'll see my muscle jumping. And then you'll see it turn off. Once it turns off, uh, my muscle will relax. So it's still on, still on, still going here. I got a nice contraction of the whole leg and then it finally turned off. Now, as it's off, I know I got 50 seconds. So what am I going to do within those 50 seconds? Well, I'm going to start contracting it myself. So I'm gonna actively push the back of the knee into the table, hold for three seconds, and then relax. Push the back of the knee into the table, hold three seconds, and then relax. Then hopefully I can get five, six, seven, eight contractions here before the stem kicks on again. When the stem kicks on again, your job is just to rest uh, and to be able to let the stem do its thing here. Uh, and again, it, you want to look for a nice, solid, strong contraction. As the contractions go, like as you, time goes, because we're you doing this for 15 minutes, you may start getting used to the stim. Well, not yet. That's very intense. But as I start getting used to the stim, I can increase the stim as I go along to get more of a violent contraction. Again, as I said, the stronger, the better. And 12 seconds, and then it's off. And then while it's off, I'm working in between, right? Three second contraction and then off. Three second contraction and then off, right? So I'm gonna work in my quad sets and then I'm gonna let the stem do its thing. This can be used every single day, 
okay? Sometimes even twice a day if you're up for it. But you can use this every single day. The parameters are very important. A pad size itself is very, very important. Right? We want to cover the whole muscle belly. Um, the intensity is very important. So again, it'll be tough to increase it right away. But as you get more and more comfortable with it, you want to increase the intensity as much as possible. At minimum, you need to see a contraction in the muscle. Uh, and then as high up as you can go is the way that we want to do it. So every day, start with the leg straight. As your knee um, increases in bending range, okay, and I'll probably do a separate video on that, on the uh, exact setup there. We're looking to about 60 degrees. Um, that is a better um, length of the quad muscle to do this type of work for. So we will transition the patients to doing um, these muscle stim with the knee bent. I use this stim for uh, for some people two months, some people longer. Really, we want you to have a good quad contraction. And once we start muscle testing, right, once we start testing this quad muscle and compare it to the other leg, once it hits around 70, 80% of the other side, then I stop the stim. Usually for most people, I use this stim for at least two months. It can be done every day, but at minimum should be done three times a week um, for that 15 minute period. The parameters matter, the intensity matters. I will put those that information below so you can get an idea. Guys, if you found this helpful, please like it. Please subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment below. Um, share it with a friend. Thank you so much. This is Dr. Khan signing off. I will see you all uh, next time.